Hey guys, uh, Kevin here to bring you a new video today. For today, I'm going to be talking about uh, the next film that I watched um, for today's uh, Horror October. Um, this one uh, sure was an interesting one, I will say. Um, it's called Drag Me to Hell. Um, yeah, quite the name, I know. Um, but yeah, uh, one of my f friends uh, recommended me to watch this movie. And so I was like, okay. I might. And then I saw it was directed by Sam Raimi. So then I was like, okay, well, I kind of have to now. Um, it's a newer one from him. It's from 2007, I believe. Or 2009. Yeah, 2009. I thought it was 2007. Yeah, it's 2009. But yeah, um, 2009. Um, it was interesting. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, I'll, I'll get into it though, but um, yeah, it was an interesting one. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it a lot for um, for the horror elements that it incorporated um, from Sam Raimi because um, a lot of the horror elements were pretty like gory and just um, like campy and just like crazy and outrageous. Um, that's just kind of like the way Sam Raimi is with um, with directing films. And just like there's like moments of like horror that I see with like blood and guts and stuff that just uh, takes me back to the days of Evil Dead, and it just it just makes me remember like okay I mean this is why Sam Raimi is directing this like you can tell it's his film when you're watching this um, just because of like certain elements of it of like horror that I really enjoyed like at one point like this girl like confronts this monster and she like drops this anvil on it and it its eyes like shoot out at her like into her um which is just so unrealistic like if you drop an anvil on somebody their eyes aren't gonna explode out of their brain like that's just that's just like so silly but like yeah it's like things like that and like old ladies puking on her and on this girl and all sorts of things being drowning in mud almost and um yeah just all sorts of weird shit but yeah let's get into the movie though um it it was it was uh kind of bizarre for a story so it, it's basically about this girl um who works for a bank and um she um uh, works for this um she ends up having this lady um to deal with this like a customer um, at the bank and then she wanted to have like an extension on her mortgage and she said no because like she was like not making payments on it and i guess she was like struggling with with payments um which is like kind of silly um the fact that um what happens is that she um she says she can't have an extension on that so they were going to have to like repossess her house i guess um because they've already given her extension i guess um, which I don't even know if that's, I don't even know if that's, uh, like realistic to be honest. It just, like, I feel like you would probably have longer than that to, you know, to still have your house. Like that seems a little like exaggerated. Um, but yeah, she basically tells her like, you can't have this extension. And she happens to be this evil, dark person who just because of that, um, wants to exact revenge on her by literally condemning her to hell um and in doing that she um brings out a number of things that like kind of go after her and like proceed to to torment her um like different demons and stuff and it's pretty gruesome um the stuff she has to like face and battle um um and, and it's honestly like um the things she has to face with like different like horror things just based on the fact that she's like cursed now because of this woman um and she fights the woman at the beginning that was like a really fun fight scene that i loved um she fights this woman in her car um and nearly kills her um but like does like some crazy shit to survive and it was pretty wild but yeah and then after that like she's basically like cursed i guess um, so this like demon is like following her like tormenting her in different ways 
Um, it's hard to even describe, like, what ways they do it because, like, you never really know, like, what they're going to do, I guess, um, just because it's a demon, I guess. I don't know. I mean, with, like, the Evil Dead franchise, it felt more fitting because it was the Necronomicon and just, like, in that, in that universe, you never really knew what was going to happen. Like, it was kind of just, like, if, if anything were to happen, you, you wouldn't be surprised because it's the world of the Necronomicon and, like, it can make anything happen that it wants to. But with this world, it's kind of, like, um, I don't give it as much slack just because, you know, it's a, it's a whole different, like, world. It's not like it's in the same world as the Evil Dead. Um, and it's just, to me, it's just like a normal world. So the fact that they're doing all this crazy horror shit, you know, logically just doesn't all that much add up. Um, uh, even though it is really entertaining, like, um, horror-wise, like, uh, at one point, like, she's eating this cake, and the cake has an eye pop out of it. An eye. And she pokes it, and then it starts bleeding, and then it sucks in her fork, <laughs> And then just does all this crazy shit. That's just like one of many things that happens to her. And like she's like, she like has this like demon that that isn't actually like a figure, but he's like a shadow. And he has the ability to like levitate her and toss her around and do all this crazy shit. And yeah, it's just it just feels like a little questionable at times. But you know, and the fact that like. Like, just because someone couldn't have an extension on their mortgage, they decide to literally sentence someone to hell with a curse? Like, okay. Um, or you could, like, you know, understand that they're just, you know, a regular working person who, you know, is just trying to, you know, do their job and, like, isn't here to, like, fuck you over. Um, it's just that the decision that had to be made. So, like, calm down. But like, anyways, yeah, that was pretty, uh, pretty wild with that. Um, but yeah, um, either way, uh, it gets a little crazier too because she visits this like, um, I don't even know, seance professional, I guess, or like gypsy, um, or just like person to try to help her with like, um, getting this thing off of her. Um, and they perform like a weird ritual where like, one of the people like speaks in Spanish to try to like condemn the spirit away and just sells all these like random things in Spanish and like like it, it feels like it's like okay like that seems questionable like is that how you would condemn a demon just scream a bunch of words in Spanish at it like is that how that works though like and then it, it does work for some reason like it like when she starts yelling at it it listens and like and this, this Spanish lady who, like, knows all this stuff about, like, demons, she starts, like, yelling at it, and it works some somewhat um, until we find out that um, this, it was actually this button that this person, that this girl had. Yeah, pretty wild. Um, this person, <laughs> this person has this button, owns this button um, that was cursed, so because it's a cursed object, she owns it. So because she owns that, um, the curse is still attached to her either way. And then because of that, um, she tries to get rid of the button by going to this person's grave and putting it in them, but for some reason that doesn't work, um, after going through all this trouble of getting drowned in, like, mud, which is pretty gruesome, but, uh, that was fun to watch. <laughs> but, um, in the end, um, there's this, like, outrageous ending where just, like, I thought I was kind of stupid. I wish it, I kind of wish it didn't end this way, but, um, I mean, it, it felt like a, it initially it was feeling like kind of like a cookie cutter ending, um, because she thought she had like, um, given away the item, the button, but she hadn't. So like, it felt like a cookie cutter ending at first, but it turns out it wasn't because she ends up like accidentally falling onto the train tracks, which was just like so exaggerated because she like, she like literally like gets up like this. And then she falls, like, she falls, like, all the way back like this. She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, like, she falls back, like, literally, like, ten feet. Like, okay, you could have easily not did that, but all right. That's cool. 
Um, and then she just gets pulled down by this demon um, thing waiting in hell for her because she was, because I guess her fate was, her fate was inevitable for denying this person's loan. Uh, cool, cool story. Yeah, um, but yeah. Um, no, like, it was, it wasn't a bad story that, it wasn't really that much of a bad story, but there's just a lot of, like, really, um, like, questionable, like, story elements to it. I, I know it's, I know it's supposed to be like that, like, it's supposed to be, like, campy and just, um, unrealistic. It, it is, but I just don't feel like there's a lot that really, like, per se warrants that, um, but... If, if you do believe in that, that it should have it, then more power to you, I guess. I guess it is a great film in that case, but for me, it just, it wasn't that great because of that. But I still absolutely love the horror elements of it um, that, you know, Sam Raimi um, incorporated into this with just, like, uh, um, all these different um, ways of torment that, like, this curse had of, like, tormenting this, this main character girl. Um, they just camp with like all sorts of ways to like torture her and like I know it's weird I like torture what like what uh, well like, yeah like it was just entertaining to see like all the different ways they came up with for like um, torturing her and and how she could like and there's like cool ways that she had to cope with for like um, having to beat these things that were torturing her like she at one point she gets like a like a giant bucket of worms in her mouth and like yeah there's just like all sorts of like crazy things throughout the movie and like with Sam Raimi there's like it felt a lot like um, Evil Dead because um, like she would be like at getting attacked by something and then like she would have like an arm free and then she would just like grab something and then just like bash it over the head with it <laughs> and you're just like okay that kind of reminds me a lot of Evil Dead like you know, like, um, I don't know, just, like, when they're almost being killed and they, they find something to grab and they just, like, go like that. Or, like, that kind of reminds me of, like, Evil Dead where, like, um, where, like, Ash is about to, like, die from this monster and he miraculously gets this necklace and, um, I think he, like, uses it to, like, grab onto the book or something, um, so that he can burn the book. I think it was like that. I think that's what it was. I want to say, but yeah, it was. It was like that kind of. <laughs> yeah, so it was. It brought back some cool memories because, I think, um, because I think Evil Dead is so amazing. It's it's definitely. Um, I'd say my favorite horror trilogy. Um, potentially my favorite horror movie is in there. Um, Evil Dead Two. That that could be my favorite horror movie. I mean, I guess that could always change though. But I'd say that is what my favorite horror movie is. But yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I did enjoy this film, um, n you know, it was fun to watch, um, even though the story was kind of, was kind of bruh, uh, I would say, but it was, it was definitely a fun to watch movie, I'm, I'm glad I watched it, um, I'd give it a, I'd give it a 6.5, I know that's, I don't wanna, I hope I'm not being too harsh with that, but yeah, I'd give it a 6.5, um, I was surprised it got... I'm kind of surprised it got the rating it did on Rotten Tomatoes, given, like, um, just, like, the way the story is and stuff, and just how how it's set up, but it is what it is. But, yeah, either way, I give it a 6.5. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to like, comment, be sure to like and comment your own thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the next one.